While many college students are at the beach working on their tans this summer, there are some who are using their summer break to give back to the community. People like a young computer major you're about to meet who had all the brain power and right connections to help inner city kids. Here's today's Good News segment. Well, the TCP IP with the DHCP server can... It may sound like a foreign language, but all this computer jargon does make sense to 20-year-old Richard Shillington, a bright information technology major who really thinks with his heart. So I feel that this is really just going to benefit the community and benefit the world as a whole. Richard wanted to make a difference for less fortunate children here in South Florida by installing an innovative educational program that makes learning on the computer fun and easy. He had the right software, but needed the right hardware. Come on in, I'll show you where the computers are. Which is where Scott Ross of the law offices of Green Spoon Martyr comes in. Here, I've got one set up for you. After talking to Richard and sharing the idea with partners at the firm, Scott offered to donate 10 good quality computer systems to give Richard's project the boost it needed. For a kid to do general research or uh, print a paper or something like that, they're f fantastic systems. Richard worked his magic on all 10 systems and delivered them to the Miami Rescue Mission's Community Activity Center, which, among other programs, offers free computer classes to kids. Our place at the Miami Rescue Mission allows an opportunity for them to come and say, wow, we do have a station and a computer that we can come to and we can work off of it. But there were only five computers for 120 kids to share. Now, thanks to this donation, the Miami Rescue Mission has doubled its capacity. And there's more on the way. We have probably about 50 and even more. And again, which will keep Richard busy all summer long and enrich these kids' lives for years to come. I like computers because they can help me do better in school. And we do thank both Richard and the law offices of Green Spoon Martyr for their teaming up and making this donation possible. And if you like them, would also like to make a positive difference in our community or know someone who is, please email us at ourgoodnews at local10.com. What a great kid. I like to end our morning on that note. All right, so we're going to go ahead. I want to show you that. I'm a little bit of background on that. I think that's some, uh, some interesting background to, to that. Uh, what was actually very, very funny is many years ago, uh, I, I came across some uh, old, broken down Windows computer. Now, I realize you're not supposed to say the same word four times in a row old, broken down Windows computer. Uh, but here's the thing this isn't a time before apps. This isn't a time before kids had apps before anybody had different applications. So you're like, you know, that's actually quite a cool thing to do. And we started with 10, and every single one of those kids had a computer at home, which is what's really cool. I did about 250 computers, and how that came to be was my mom, I was between my undergraduate and my graduate career, my mom comes to me and she goes, uh, get out of the house and do something. Never tell your kids to get out of the house and do something because you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna bring a bunch of Windows computers into your living room and bring a news station into your living room, which she would not sign the release for them to take her messy living room filled with computers. You can't take pictures of my living room that's filled with computers like that. I'm like, oh, okay, mom, I guess I can't take pictures of your living room that's filled with computers like that. But today we are going to be talking all about apps. So how many of you use apps on your device, on your iPhone, on your iPad, on your Samsung phone, on any of those different things like that? And how many of you just stick in the web browser and you're like, oh, I love everything in the web browser? The magic of these devices is the apps. So we're going to talk about the apps for in a few minutes of time, but I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to show you a couple of very interesting apps because my mom always says, when you meet a new group of people, there are two things that, that you do not talk about. Do any of you know what those two things you don't talk about when you meet a new group of people are? Politics and religion. So let me find my marker. Ooh, I have a marker. It was in my pocket. Ah. So we're going to first talk about religion. I'm going to tell you something I did to my mom to scare her a couple of years back. Now, I was brought up and I was raised Jewish. And since I was raised Jewish, one of the things in the Jewish faith that you're not supposed to do is you're not supposed to get a tattoo. So I have an app that I want to share with you that I convinced my mom that I actually got a tattoo. So this is a really cool app. It's called Ink Hunter. This is the first one we're going to talk about. I-N-K-H-U-N-T-E-R. And if I go ahead and I open it up, give it just a second to show up on the screen. 
I-N-K-H-U-N-T-E-R. There we go. Now here's what I do. I can go ahead and I can give myself a tattoo. Now since I work on a ship, I'm going to give myself a boat anchor. This is exactly what I did with my mom. But how do I go ahead and give myself a tattoo? Well, we're going to use something for two different things in a row called augmented reality. Have any of you ever heard of that before? I can tell you a lot of people haven't heard of it because when I put it in the daily program, everybody thought I spelled it wrong. Augmented reality. So what I have right here is just a blue marker. Nothing fancy. It is a blue marker. It says it's permanent, but uh, it's not tattoo permanent. And what I have to do is I take my arm, roll up my sleeve, and in a blue marker, I draw a smiley face on my arm. Nothing fancy here. And then when I go in, I can actually go ahead and replace that smiley face with, come on, an anchor. And you notice that the smiley face goes away, but guess what stays? The anchor. So when I told my mom I got an anchor tattoo, and she goes, you didn't get a tattoo. My good little boy didn't go out and get a tattoo in court. So what was cool is as long as I kept the smiley face on here, I could fake the anchor everywhere on the ship. She's like, go take a picture in front of the gift shops with the anchor. I'm like, okay. Go take a picture with the captain with the anchor. So after my mom comes on board to visit, she lives in Miami, she's like, I want to see the anchor. I want to see the anchor. I was finally and gave up. She was going for a good week. She thought I actually got a tattoo, and she's like, oh, God. So the name of that app, it's called Inhunter, I-N-K-H-U-N-T-E-R. I think it's a really, really awesome application. Inhunter, again, is the name of that application. Now, the next application I want to show you is actually, well, we talked about religion, now it's time to talk about politics. Now, this is another augmented reality application. Does anybody have on them a dollar bill, a one dollar bill? I know we're on a cashless ship, but I'm looking for anybody that has a one dollar bill. Yeah. yeah, can you pass it on up? I will pass it back. He's got one closer. Okay, you don't have to pass it back. No, I'm just kidding. Can I keep this one? No, you can't. I can't give you permission to keep other people's money. Deck four. Uh, he thought that joke. Um, but the name of this app is, it's called 1600. Now, what's at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue? The White House is at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Now, have any of you ever seen a dollar bill come to life before? What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a dollar bill to life using an app called 1600. And it's using augmented reality. And the idea of augmented reality is it augments your reality. So if I go ahead, I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to place this bill flat on the stage. And watch what's going to happen. building a White House. It's doing it on my screen. It's not playing well on your screen because it's very high quality. But I can go in and this is the whole idea is if you can augment your reality, you can do some really, really cool things with technology. So augment your reality, do some awesome things with technology. Um, now I have this dollar bill. Hold on. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. I'm not a magician. That was like Six nights ago, he got off in uh, in the Bermuda. So, uh, but what I do have is I have this dollar bill. Um, it's the same thing. It's gone through the laundry. This is how we launder money. Um, uh, <laughs> take one bill and switch it with another bill. But that's actually a really cool one. That's what we're talking about when we talk about augmented reality. And I want to show you some apps that you've probably never heard of before. So the next app I want to show you is a very, very cool augmented reality app called Car Finder, C-A-R-F-I-N-D-E-R. -E and I'm sure you all come across this before. You go out, say Disney World, shopping mall, parks, different things like that. You park your car, you come back and you go, where's my car? 
And you go, where is my car? So the name of this application is Car Finder, C-A-R-F-I-N-D-R. C-A-R-F-I-N-D-E-R. And all it tells you is where you parked your car. So what you do is when you've got your car and you've got your car parked, what you do is you say, okay, I parked my car here. And when you come out, you take your camera, you go like that, and it puts a big red arrow over exactly where you parked your car. So if you're going to Disney World, if you're going to any other places like that, you get a big ugly red arrow exactly where you parked your car. It's called Car Finder. It's a really cool application. Give me 30 seconds, I'm just gonna get something switched over real quick. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about the App Store for a second. How many of you have heard of the App Store before? Now, if you have an iPhone or an Android or any type of tablet like that, you've likely already accessed the App Store. It's the big little A on your iPhone, it's the big A. On your Android, it's the thing that's called Google Play. Will be what it's called on the Android phone. On Kindles, it's called the Fire Store. There's all kinds of different names for the App Store. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit of the App Store. I want to explain to you some things that are happening inside of the App Store. Give me just about 20 seconds time. Because my screen is being weird. Let's go App Store. Here we go. And App Store. Boom. So, as I said, the App Store is this big letter A that shows up right there on the screen. And as I open it up, we will see all kinds of different things. One of the first things I want to talk about in the App Store is something that a lot of you probably don't do, which is called updating your apps. How many of you have a lot of apps on your device? And how many of you update those apps that are on your device? Here's the loaded question though, how many of you read what's in those updates for the apps on your device? That's a much smaller subsection of the population, isn't it? So you read what's in the updates for the apps on your device, but what I have here is there's all kinds of different updates that come all the time. Now how many of you knew, I told you in the class the other day, that Facebook can actually make video and phone calls now? That came in an app update. So it came written right in the update, the update said, Hey, Facebook cannot make videos and phone calls, and if you didn't read that, would you know that it could do that? No. So what you want to make sure is, you see I have one update, one app update, you want to make sure you update your apps. So what we're talking about now is the App Store. This is the main screen of the App Store. This is called the Featured section. And what's cool is this changes all of the time. So it changes all the time. Like, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, this App Store looked very, 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 very different. It was talking about Earth Day. You know Earth Day, the Earth Day was yesterday, so it had all kinds of different Earth Day apps. In February, uh, it's very interesting what the App Store does. In the beginning of February, the first week or so of February, this featured screen is filled with online dating applications. Because nobody wants to be alone on Valentine's Day. The second week of February, it changes and you get flower buying applications. And the third and a half week, right after Valentine's Day, what do you think shows up on the main screen of the App Store? Legal paperwork applications. <laughs> True story for if you actually went ahead and messed up Valentine's Day, which you never want to do, I can tell you from experience, never tell your uh, girlfriend on Valentine's Day, she needs to hold her camera like this. Uh, but <laughs> that's another story for another time. But this is the featured section. This is a curated section of apps. What most of us probably do when we go to the App Store is we go to the search box in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to tell you, you're very fortunate you're not in the States right now because there's a craze to sleep up in the UK as well. It's called, uh, everybody's downloading the Starbucks app to figure out where to get the unicorn frappuccino. It's a very strange thing that they're selling at Starbucks. But what's really cool is in this featured section, there's something really interesting that is below the scroll. What do I mean by below the scroll? You know newspapers, they say below the fold. You've probably heard that before when they say a story is below the fold. This is below the scroll. And if I scroll down, what Apple does is every single week, they offer a paid app for free. If you get it during that week, it's called the free app of the week. Cut the rope magic. I know this application is usually a $5 application. I hit install, if I get it during this week, I get to keep it forever for free, which is what's really quite cool. So I have my featured page right there, and on my next page, on my next page, I have my top charts. 
So I don't need to buy that right now. Now my top charts are going to show me the top free, the top paid, and the top grossing apps. Now apps can cost anywhere from 99 cents all the way up to $999. Do you know the app that cost $999? There's an app that just, you opened it and it said, I'm rich. <laughs> cost $999. And every major celebrity went and bought that app. And you can only rate an app if you viewed it, so it had pretty good ratings, to be honest with you. It had pretty good ratings. But you'll see we have the top paid apps. Now here's the thing. If a paid app has less than four stars, should you pay even 99 cents for it? No! You are correct. <laughs> so if a paid app has less than four stars, you should not even waste your 99 cents. Now the number one paid app on the App Store used to be, as of last week, a game called Minecraft. Have you ever heard of a game called Minecraft? It's actually owned by Microsoft, something all the kids and the grandkids are playing. I don't understand it myself, but it's a really cool application. That's the top paid application. Now the center column is the top free applications. Now here's the important thing. When you're talking the top free applications, they no longer say free on them. They say get. Because there's no such thing as a free application. The only free application that's ever existed is the one that I'm going to show you at the end of this class. What do I mean by there's no such thing as a free application? The Celebrity Cruises application is a free application. But the purpose of that application is for you to book cruises, for you to manage your cruises, for you to buy shore excursions for your cruises. The Pizza Hut application is free, but the entire purpose of the Pizza Hut application is to buy things from Pizza Hut. So that's the idea there. There is no such thing as a free application, so Apple actually changed it and used the word get, but if it doesn't say a price, it is free. Now, should you get a free application if it's rated less than four stars? Why not? It's free. Worst case, you saw me reach for the button. You're like, I was gonna say, no, no, why not? It's free. If it's the worst case scenario, guess what you do? Delete it. It's done, it's simple, it's easy. But the last column is a very confusing column, and I want to talk about that for a second. It's called top grossing. So this is the applications that make the most money, but here's the strange thing. Most of those applications are free. Have any of you ever played the Candy Crush? We all know the Candy Crush. The Candy Crush is a very addictive game, um, and what's interesting is at the height of its popularity, the Candy Crush was making over $1 million every 24 hours in people paying for magical train tickets. Have any of you ever bought magical train tickets for real money on Candy Crush? Anybody? Okay, at least 20 of you in this room are lying. So, uh, it's okay. And someone was going to call out and say yes, but I'll give you another example. The top grossing application right now is called Game of War. That application had a Super Bowl commercial today. Uh, not today, this year. Had a Super Bowl commercial that cost $4 million. And it's a free application. So understand, not all applications are free. Even if they say free, they're not all free. Now the nice thing I always get with the App Store, this is true of the iPhone App Store, the iPad App Store, the Android App Store. When you get a new device, what's cool is you can get all of your apps that you've ever had. So these are all of the apps that I've ever had on my phone before. On my iPad. Now here's a, here's a trivia question, and some of you are going to get this wrong. What came first, the iPhone or the iPad? No, actually iPhone. First. But here's the cool thing, the iPad actually did come first. They created the iPad first, but they released the iPhone first because they didn't think people would have a giant tablet like this, but this just shows me my iPad apps. If I want to go in and see the first apps I ever bought, I can keep scrolling. These are iPhone apps as well. I want to show you my first iPhone app I ever bought. My first iPhone app I ever bought was AOL Instant Messenger. And my second one I ever bought was AOL Radio just to give you an idea. So I want you to think back to when the original iPhone was out and AOL was still a valid and relevant company. If some of you are sitting around and saying they're still a valid and relevant company, in about three days time we're gonna be back here telling you about how to set up a Gmail account and move everything over. But I can go in and I can see all my apps I've ever gotten and they have a little cloud next to them. Now to be very clear, this little cloud means that the apps are stored in the cloud. It does not mean they're taking up space in your iCloud. That makes sense. It doesn't mean you're taking up space in your iCloud. It just means that they are stored in the cloud. 
And that is a quick look at the App Store. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start talking about some apps. I'm going to show you an app that I've already shown you in an earlier class, but I'm going to show it to you in a slightly different way. So this is a really cool app. It's one of my favorite apps. It's called Google Translate. Now in a few minutes we're going to do something, we're going to try something really difficult. But I want to show you the app in its simplest form. It's a free application. It's just called Google Translate. You can find it by just typing in Translate. And what I can do is I can translate between multiple languages. So I'll give you an example. I can speak a little bit of Spanish and I can say, hola, 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 hello, hello, there we go. So I can go in and I can actually have a conversation inside of this application. It's very, very cool. Here's the problem. I only speak one language. I speak English. So I only speak English, but you know what? Here's the great thing. As you've noticed, every day I bring a different friend on board that helps me with a language. Now I have brought on our international host. His name is Mathieu. He comes all the way from the country of Belgium. Give Mathieu a round of applause. Because me and Mathieu want to try something we have not tried yet. I want to let you know something. Everybody that's come up in the special guest, they ask, what am I going to do? And I never tell them. So they're up on this stage completely blank. Here you go, Matthew. Go ahead and introduce yourself, and I'm going to show what we're going to do. Thank you very much for my dear friend Richard here. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm Matthew, the international host on board. As you said, I'm from Belgium, and I speak five languages. So uh, I'm here to give uh, to provide extra language assistance to all the non-English speaking guests on board for Synapity. All right, so what me and Matthew are going to do right now is I don't speak a word of French. So me and Matthew are going to have a conversation in French. Well, I'm going to talk in English and he's going to talk in French. And what's really cool is we're going to actually be able to converse with each other. So I'm going to talk and then he's going to talk and I'm going to talk and he's going to talk and it's going to show on the screen exactly what's going on. This is where it gets really cool. This is, if you've ever seen Star Trek, you know they've got the communicator. This is essentially the communicator because French is just as good as Klingon to me. So if I go ahead, I'm going to ask Matthew. I gotta go eat first. Hey Matthew, I was wondering if you could tell me exactly where the bathroom is because I really need to go to the bathroom right now. Hey Matthew, I was wondering if you could tell me where the bathroom is because I really need to go to the bathroom right now. <laughs> Let's try something easier. <laughs> Hello Matthew. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Bonjour, Mathieu. Bonjour, Richard. Comment vas-tu? Hello, Richard. How are you? I'm great, Mathieu. I think it's really cool that we can actually talk back and forth and we can communicate even though I'm not speaking French. He's thinking if we speak it out loud, he has a lot. But you can write it. There we go. Um, I'm not going to try and read it. Un, okay, I guess I'm going to. Un excellent match. Je pense que je peux faire un bon tour. Mathieu, give me one more back in French. Je suis super content d'être ici sur la scène avec toi et je souhaite une superbe croisière à tous les gens ici au théâtre. Yeah, thought about one word of that. Uh, the good news is I do speak a little bit of French. I heard this song back in the day. Uh, I don't know what it means, but I heard this song that's got some French in it. It goes, Voulez-vous uh, coucher avec moi ce soir? Um, so, uh, very fortunately, Google Translate. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Yeah. No, 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 no. No! Okay, cool. Now, one of the nice things is if you notice me and Matthew have gone.
not had enough conversation. Oh, okay, hold on, Matthew. Do you have another phone call? Hold on. Yes? This is, okay. Yeah. Captain's not bluffing us? Yes. <laughs> so you're watching this from the bridge on the cameras you have right there. Um, and you said that Google Translate's going to replace Matthew as the international host. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you said the announcement this morning we're 400 miles from the Azores. Yeah. So you need him in lifeboat number three at about 3 o'clock this afternoon. So Matthew, you'll be leaving the ship and you'll be spending the rest of your time for your contract in the Azores. Oh. <laughs> I don't usually let people touch on no one. But that is Matthew, your international host. And I just brought Matthew on because I thought that was a really cool demo. The name of that application is Google Translate. Now you can also type things into Google Translate as well, or you can visually, I showed this earlier, but I'll show it one more time because I think it's really cool. I can visually translate things. Can I borrow your little uh, daily program thing there? Okay, so this is in not English. I'm okay with that. And it says, America Latina Hoy, and it's in not English. I'm thinking it's in Spanish, am I correct? Imagine for a second if I could take this thing that's in Spanish and translate it to English just by pointing my camera at it. This is the same exact application. So if I go in, and America Latina Hoy says, Latin America Today, a service exclusively for celebrity clips. Now, just so you know, so watch this line on the top that says a service exclusively for celebrity, exclusive for celebrity clips. I want you to understand what it says up there. This is not a camera trick. It says, una servicio exclusiva para celebrity clips. So it's actually visually translating it. And the cool thing is this does not need an internet connection in order to visually translate things, which is what's very cool. So you can actually visually look at it. It is a free application called Google Translate. Now, here's the thing. We're going to talk about a lot of different Google services over the next few days. But one of the things I'm going to explain to you in the last class is why all these Google services are free, why they don't cost money. I'm going to explain that in the last class to give you a little idea. But I want to move on to another app that's a problem that I know we've all had before. How many have been to the movies in the last year or so? And if you go to the movies, you go, you get a popcorn, you get a drink, and the drink is gigantic. And halfway through the movie, what do you have to go do? You have to go run and pee. So there's an application I want to share with you called Run Pee. <laughs> what it does is it tells you during a movie when you can go run and pee. So one of the last movies that I saw was Beauty and the Beast. And during the movie Beauty and the Beast, there are four pee times. So, when the movie starts, what you do is you go to the timer and it says, when the Disney logo fades, you hit start timer. About a minute before each pee time, your phone will vibrate and say, hey, pee time is coming up. So the pee time I actually took was I went with pee time number four. So when I saw Beauty and the Beast in the theaters, it vibrates pee time number four. It says, when Belle sees her father in the mirror in trouble and the Beast tells Belle, you must go to him, no time to waste. So when that vibrates, you stand up and you run to the bathroom. For the men, this is very difficult because it's a one-handed operation. You take the zipper down and you can read what's happening while you are peeing. Okay? It's called the synopsis. Uh, you can actually read what's happening while you are peeing during the movie. So Belle thanks the beast for giving her the mirror and letting her go down to her father. She leaves, da da da. And by the time I got back, I knew exactly what was going on in the movie. Now here's the cool thing. It's a free application, but you notice it's sponsored by Norvigu, an overactive bladder medication. First bathroom <laughs> just getting away. So I mean, it could be overactive bladder. It's like, oh, okay. I want you to send a text message and, and see what's going on there. But that's really cool. That is an app called RunPe. <laughs> now, the next app I want to show you is about language learning. Now, a lot of you think you know what application. If I'm talking about learning another language, what is the application you think I'm going to pull out? Rosetta Stone, well, you sailed with me enough, you know, right? but the, the big application in language learning for many, many years was an application called Rosetta Stone. 
And I used to not be able to show this application because we had a partnership with Rosetta Stone and we say we can't show things that are conflicts to things that we have partnerships with. But this is a free version of Rosetta Stone. And personally, I think it's better than Rosetta Stone. It's called Duolingo, D-U-O-L-I-N-G-O. -O. It's a really, really awesome application. And if I wanted to learn Spanish or learn French, I could say, yes, I'm a beginner, which I am. And what's cool is it says, which of these is the boy? So we have a piece of bread. We got an apple. We've got the storm we went through that was caused by El Nino. El Nino. And El Nino is the boy. Which of these is the man? El hombre. Which of these is the woman? La mujer. Which of these is the girl? La niña. And then it gets a little more complex. Una this niña. is a, a girl. This is una niña. La mujer. means the woman. And I can go in. Yo soy un hombre. I am a, oh, I'm international. Yeah. I am a man. Yeah. <laughs> so much easier to use when you have Matthew. Yo soy un Yo. hombre. Un. Oh, oh. But here's the cool thing. Spanish is the number one language on here, but you can learn all kinds of other languages for free. That's what's really cool. So I can learn Spanish, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, Dutch, Irish, Danish, Swedish, Turkish, Esperanto, Norwegian. Now there's two languages I've been learning to pick up the ladies from the dining room, if you have any very nice ladies that are working in the dining room. Uh, it's Ukrainian and Russian. I've learned to say a few phrases. The only phrases they've said back to me, I don't know what it means, is yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure what that means. I think that means yes, um, no, no. Uh, Polish, Welsh, Hebrew, Vietnamese, Hungarian. If you didn't want to work on the bridge of the ship, you could learn Greek. Or you could learn Swahili as well. Now here's what's really cool. Rosetta Stone cost thousands of dollars. This is free. Why? How are they making money? I think that's an interesting one. Here's the cool thing. They have partnered with the largest human translation service in the world, and once you graduate from Duolingo, you can become a human translator. That's what's really cool. So you become a human translator once you graduate from Duolingo, and that human translation, they'll pay you, and they get a cut from that human translation revenue. But we're talking about translating. Here's a question. What is the number one language in the world? English, English Spanish, Mandarin. I think they're all wrong. The number one language in the world is math. <laughs> Numbers. I'm an engineer by trade, so I can, I can say that. Number one language is math, and here's the problem. When I was in school, my math teacher would always tell me, I said, why do I need to learn to do these stupid problems? I'm never going to do this in my everyday life. And she would look at me dead in the face. Now, the cool thing is, me and my two sisters all had the same math teacher. She said, you're not always going to have a calculator in your pocket. <laughs> So now here's the great thing. Me and my two sisters have the same math teacher. Now my two sisters are younger than me, so she can't use that excuse anymore because every kid has a smartphone in their pocket. So here's what's really cool. You can take this back to the kids. I love this one. The name of this is it's very similar to Google Translate, how we did that visual translation, but it solves printed math problems. The name of it is Photo Math. And all I have to do is point it right at my math homework, 3x equals 9 should say x equals 3, 4x plus 7 equals 346, and it should say x equals 339 over 4, and 3x plus 7x plus 42 equals 342, and that answer, oh wait, no, 342, the answer is x equals 30. Now is anybody a teacher in this room, or a former teacher in this room? What are you going to say to me? No. 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 <laughs> what do you say when a student just gives you the answer? Oh, guess what? Hold up. I hit the wrong button. When a student just gives you the answer, you say, show your work, and guess what I have right there? <laughs> and this, my friends, is how my sister passed college algebra. So it's really quite cool. The name of that is Photomath. Now, we've talked about language translation, and we've talked about numbers. So now let's talk about something with language translation and numbers that happens before this class every day. Boom, boom. Attention, attention, ladies and gentlemen, it's the captain from Navagalan Bridge. 
I want to let you know that since we left the port of Bermuda, we have gone 1,216 nautical miles. Here's the problem. Number one, we hardly understand the captain. I guess I'm leaving the ship at 3 o'clock today, let's be honest. Well, number one, we hardly understand the captain. But number two, do any of you, other than if you sail, do you know what a nautical mile is? Yeah? It's, it's that long, yeah. It's, it's, it's big, it's big. Yeah, but here's the cool thing. How many of you have like a currency converter or a unit converter or something on your device, you know, to know the currency exchange and stuff like that? Here's the cool thing. This is one app that does it all. It's called Converter Plus. And it will convert anything. Uh, very fortunate for myself. Uh, I am going over to Europe now with this great strong currency called the United States dollar, uh, especially the freshly laundered one. Uh, it's about one to one with the euro now. Uh, so last time I was there, it was a lot different, but I can go ahead and I can put in one U.S. dollar and I can translate it currency in this app, but I can also, as the captain said, we've gone 1,114 nautical miles. If I type that in, 1114 nautical miles, that is 1,281 miles, or 2,063 kilometers, or 6,768,792.651 feet. <laughs> I went to Lapland. Have any of you ever been to Lapland before in, uh, in uh, Finland? In, in Finland. And I asked, I went out and I saw the northern lights and I said, what temperature is it? And they said, it's negative 40 degrees Celsius. And I said, give it to me in a way I'll understand it. And they said, negative 40. I, I didn't believe it. Negative 40 degrees Celsius is negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. What's really cool is this is all in the same app. Now, a question a lot of people have, and they, they ask this on the comment cards at the end of every cruise, is, uh, well, this is a question I have. I wanted to know how fast the elevators on board move. <laughs> According to all of you, they don't. But uh, I go, how fast the elevators on board move? I asked one of the engineers, he goes, uh, they move at uh, 35 feet per second. I go, anything that makes any sense to me. But I can type in 35 feet per second, and that says that it's 23 miles per hour or 38 kilometers per hour, but they are dialed down if we do have rough seats. So uh, that's why the elevators haven't been around this cruise. Um, but it's really cool. The name of this app is it is called Converter Plus, is the name of this application. C O N V E R T E R P L U S. Now, the next app I want to show you, I'm going to jump for two apps. I'm going to jump over to my iPad. And we're going to talk about vacation and food. I like to talk about vacation and food. Okay. So I'm going to show you a really cool app. Now, one of the things that Celebrity did to cut down on a lot of the waste and different things like that is they did get rid of a lot of the shore excursions brochures. They have ones that, just, not the shore, the uh, future cruise sales brochures. They got rid of a lot of the future cruise sales brochures. And what's cool is we piloted, we did this really cool thing on reflection. We replaced it with some iPads and a really cool app called TRVL. This is an awesome, awesome application. It's called TRVL. And what it is, is an app that tells you about countries all over the world. So most of the places that we go to as celebrity are inside of here. Now the next place we're going to is Lisbon. So if I type in Lisbon, what it's going to do, if, it's, if you find, if you find Lisbon, I'm an American, so I don't know where anything is in the world. Uh, but if I type in Lisbon, I can see all kinds of things about Lisbon. This is a free application, and what it's going to do is it's going to teach you about all of our ports of call. So it's really, really cool. It's called TRVL, and if I go in, and the cool thing is, you can download this before you leave home, and it will stay loaded on your device. I haven't downloaded Lisbon yet, so I can go in, enjoying the sounds of sadness. You can read all these different things. Out of the hundreds of ports we go to, there's about 20 that are not on TRVL, and what we did is we loaded all of them on there. Even my favorite port, let me know my favorite port in the whole wide world, we're going there in about a month and a half. Any guesses? Tallinn, Estonia is my favorite port in the whole wide world. Any of you ever been there? Yeah. That is my absolute favorite port anywhere because I love medieval times and I love, like, I love that period of time. So that's my favorite port ever. Highly, highly recommend. I always tell people, you can go on this app, you can see all of these different places, but if you're looking for a cruise to do, the best cruise celebrity does, and the reason I stay on Eclipse, is the Eclipse's Baltic cruise. So the Eclipse's Baltic cruise that goes to Russia, goes to Estonia, goes everywhere like that. I absolutely love that. Even you can learn about the Galapagos right in here. So I like to call TRVL the replacement for the future cruise sales book. 
which is actually a cool thing. You can go in, and on reflection, as I said, they have iPads that are all loaded with TRVL, and they've got all the destinations on there on reflection. So we did that as a little pilot, and it actually worked out really, really well. Now, another app I want to show you on my iPad, we talked about travel. I now want to talk about food. We like food, don't we? Now, this is a cool app. It is a digital cookbook. It's called Epicurious, E-P-I-C-U-R-I-O-U-S. And what Epicurious allows you to do is it allows you to pick an ingredient that you have sitting around and find some recipes. So this is a true story. Have any of you sailed on the Eclipse before? I'm sure you have a lot of you. You may know my good friend. He is the executive pastry chef. He's not on board right now. His name is Bruno. Ever met Bruno? I'm going to do my Bruno impression. I can't do it as well as I used to. He goes, I know. My name is Bruno. I'm from France. I speak more languages than Matthew. <laughs> and I have uh, passports for seven countries, and I'm wanted by Interpol. <laughs> That's why he stays in the middle of the ocean. But Bruno calls me one day. He's the pastry chef. This is a true story. He goes, Richard, I have a problem. This is my bad French accent. I apologize. He goes, we have too much of a certain food on board, and we need a recipe for it. That's why he's calling me. He goes, I'm a pastry chef, and this food is no pastry. Why, why, why are you cut me for that? He goes, because they gave it to me in these pies in three days. I go, oh, 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 what's the food? He goes, bacon. <laughs> My first question was, Bruno, how do you have too much bacon on a cruise ship? I see what people eat for breakfast. But he goes, um, can you find something for me to make with bacon? I go on this app, I type in bacon, and the first result is bacon baklava. <laughs> because that's what a pastry chef can make. So we were on the ship, he made bacon baklava. Now here's the thing, the menus that you see in Ocean View or in the dining room are fixed menus, but you can make whatever you want for the crew mess. So what do you think we had in the crew mess for the next four days? <laughs> it was delicious. A Greek tradition, bacon baklava. Uh, yeah, that didn't last for too long, but it was a really, really cool thing, is bacon bacon baklava. Very interesting. Now I brought another gadget with me. I have to see if I can find it. Now I keep a lot of gadgets in my bag, but I brought something extra special today if I can find it in my bag. Oh, okay, here we go. I brought an interesting thing. Now I have coming up a bit later in the cruise, I'm going to show you some more of these things, but sometimes gadgets need apps to work. And it's what we call an app accessory. And we've had hour forward, hour forward, hour forward. I was on this stage at one o'clock last night. We were judging a crew talent show that was happening last night. Um, Unfortunately, you won't see the person who won unless you go to the medical center, so I hope none of you see the person who won. Uh, but what's really cool is, how do I get up every single morning? I think this is an interesting, uh, interesting gadget right here. This is called the Pavlov. It's called the Pavlov. Have any of you ever heard of the Pavlovian theory? Yes, this is my alarm clock. Now, during the day, I wear two watches. At night, I wear the Pavlov. Now, I'm going to show you what the Pavlov does, P-A-V, L-O-K. Now, what I need to find is, oh, I need to put in my username and password. That's useful. Uh, Got to remember. I don't know why I'm typing this on the screen. Uh, you'll have to watch this back on your uh, TV. Uh, but if I go ahead, I'm going to change, okay. Hey, guess what? I forgot my password. It's okay, I can show you without the password. That's okay. There we go. So, here's what's cool. I need someone who still has mostly original parts. <laughs> that means no pacemakers, nothing like that. You okay? No pacemaker? We're okay? Okay. Stand up real quick. It's okay. You don't have to come up on stage or anything like that. So this is called the Pavlock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to strap it on her wrist, and she's not paying attention to the little symbol that's on the top of it, because that's not a really good idea. Um, so it's called the Pavlock, and what's cool is I can actually go in and I can use my Pavlock to do some somewhat different things. Now, if you know anything about Pavlovian theory, what you do with Pavlovian theory is, you know, they, they gave a bell and the dog salivated. So this little thing is it will vibrate. You should feel it vibrate. Yeah. Feel it vibrate? Yeah? No? Connected, tap, disconnect, it's connected. But I can make it vibrate. I can make it beep. Or here's the fun part. 
I can make it electrically shock somebody. <laughs> so she's wearing my Pavlov right now. So what happens is in the morning, when my alarm goes off, it vibrates first, then it beeps, and if I don't get out of bed, guess what it does? I just need to wake it up real quick. Hold on. You get a little, little jolt there? Mm, let's try it again. I'm not going to touch your arm because I don't want to come to me. <laughs> you got it. It's a little jolt there. I keep it on minimum for you. But what it is, is that is what electrocutes me uh, every morning and gets me out of bed. So I can hit a zap and I can zap. I can do. You can just wear that for a few minutes. Just have a seat. It's okay. <laughs> it's but it's really cool, it's called the pop lock, and that's what you call an accessory. Now, I want to show you another app. I did show this before in the earlier class, but I want to show you this because this is actually a really cool. It's called Google Photos. Now, we have the next class we're going to do in here is on Google Photos, and we actually have something really cool. Tomorrow, we have both a class on Google Photos in here at 10 15 in the morning. And at 8 o'clock in the evening, we're going to have a game show with Google Photos in the entertainment court where you can win some prizes, which is what's really cool. But what Google Photos allows you to do is it allows you to free up the space on your phone or your tablet and back up everything unlimited for free. All of your photos, all of your videos across all of your devices backed up unlimited for free. And I want to show you the commercial they had real quick because this is a really interesting one. Okay, just like that. Okay. Am I getting everybody in it? I'm gonna take a picture of this time, right? One. Two. Three. So Ah, I missed it. Do it again. Ready, set, sell! Holding up the leaning tower of Pisa all by her. Dang it! Take as many photos as you want without running out of space. Introducing Free Up Space. Never run out of storage again with Google Photos. So we're going to be talking about that tomorrow, uh, both at, at two different times. We're going to be talking about it in here in the theater, and then we're going to be in the entertainment court, giving you an idea of what's going on. I want to show you one more thing, uh, which is actually really cool, that's coming up a bit later in this cruise. It's something they've done, something that celebrities just started doing. I want to show you some pictures from it. And my phone will come up on the screen, and I want to tell you about it. It's called the Inside Access Tour. And it's something really cool. If my phone wants to behave with me, let me give it a second. And what's cool is you get to go behind the scenes. One of the cool things, and you can take a lot of good pictures. You can go behind the scenes in the wine cellar. You can go to the engine room. You can go to the bridge. You can go to all these different places. It's something really cool. And you get a nice little lanyard that says inside access tour around. I want to show you what was going on. Give me 10 seconds to uh, have a discussion with my computer. OK, discussion hat. And then I have one last app to show you. But I do want to show you this, because this is actually really quite a cool tour. That's something that you've not done before. I had a guest that was on with me a bit ago, and they're like, I want to do that. Ah, it's not playing. I'll show you tomorrow in the Google Photos class. But this is the last app I want to show you. This is the only app that I've ever seen that's actually free. What do I mean by that? This company has no way to make money. They're not going to solicit money from you. They're not a charity. They're not anything like that. This app is my app that I call This Restores Faith in Humanity. That's what this app does. What's really cool about this app, well, I'm going to let it play real quick, and then I'll explain to you. It's called Be My Eyes. And I actually got to launch this app at a TED conference a couple years back. So there was a TED conference a couple years back. The name of this app is Be My Eyes. You might wonder how blind people deal with everyday challenges. Well, normally the answer is simple. We're not that different from you. We play music. We go to school. We go to work. You get the picture. But sometimes the simplest things can be difficult and we need a pair of eyes. Connect to. 
That's where you come in. Establishing video connection. Through your smartphone, Be My Eyes connects the blind with sighted people through a live video connection. Simply choose if you need help or want to help by the click of a button. That's a nice picture of you and your family, Kelly. Is it for a present? <laughs> yes, it's a photo from my parents. You can help just by installing the Be My Eyes app. Print image. And we'll notify you when someone needs your help. And if you're in the middle of something, don't worry. Someone else will step in. So, would you care to be my eyes? The Be My Eyes app. Find it in the App Store. So, what's really cool is this app has a big problem. Huh? Okay. Okay. No, it's not. I, mean, I never watched the end of that video. But this app has a big problem. It has 10,000 blind people that have signed up for it. And it has 3 million sighted people willing to help out. It has more people willing to help than it needs, so what's cool? It's an awesome app. I highly recommend you download it. And if somebody that's blind needs some help, it will dial you. They can just hear your voice. They can't see your video. So you don't even need to wear pants to help. <laughs> that's, that's, my, uh, that's my expression. You don't even need to wear pants to help. The name of the application, it says it's available just on iPhone and iPad. It's also available on Android now. It is called Be My Eyes, and it helps the blind see. Now, in this room, for we are going to be in here tomorrow for Google Photos. We're going to skip a day, but what, the day we skip, I'll be up in the eye lounge if you've got any questions on anything we've done so far. It'll be in the daily program. You'll see you. will say, yeah. Talk tech with Richard. And it's not a formal class. Just come by between those hours, and if you've got any questions. But uh, so on um, tomorrow we're going to be doing Google Photos. I highly recommend you come to Google Photos. I'm going to show you how to back up all of your photos, all of your videos from across all of your devices: iPhones, iPads, Androids, Windows, Mac, all of those different devices like that for free. And then after that, at Lisbon morning, we get to Lisbon at two o'clock in the afternoon. Lisbon morning. Oh my. That's very cool. In the second row, someone said, use be my eyes. That is, that is awesome. Uh, Lisbon morning, we're going to be talking about Gmail. Some of you have come to me this cruise that have AOL accounts, or Yahoo accounts, or Hotmail accounts, and I've said, guess what? They're going away. <laughs> I have 45 minutes to explain to you why they're going away, how to move all your stuff over, how to tell all of your contacts and everything like that. If you already have a Gmail account, please come as well because it's very likely you're using it wrong. If you already have a Gmail account and you're getting lots of spam, raise your hand. I can show you how to get rid of all the spam in your Gmail account, which is what's really, really cool. So we're going to talk about that, so that, and then tomorrow night we're going to be doing a Google Photos game show in the entertainment court. My name's Richard. This has been All About Apps. Bye!